hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Vampire Queen series. There are more episodes on my channel and other series as well, and if you'd like access to adult content or you just want to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon down below. Please leave a comment, I love hearing from you, and as always, I hope you enjoy. There you are. Have you been hiding from me? How coy of you. Oh, and so serious. Am I not allowed to joke now? How rude of me. I am joking. You know that, right? Don't hide from me, pet. Please don't ever truly hide from me. Good. <laughs> I think a storm is coming. Can you hear the wind? Or perhaps it's a little while off yet. Isn't it a relief to have our home back to ourselves? Guests in general are draining, but those guests in particular... They were getting very tiresome. Well, the celebratory mood never really recovered, did it? After that spat over what to do about humans, as if it's our choice. But you were a good girl, and stayed out of the way for the rest of it. But I am glad things are back to normal, and I can ravish you wherever and whenever I want. I do love kissing your jaw. It's such a lovely shape for a jaw. Hmm. You've been very sneaky the last few days, whilst keeping away from the others. What have you been up to? Listening? <laughs> My patient little sparrow. And thinking, well, that is a dangerous thing, isn't it? With your sharp little mind. Well, how much have you heard? No, I will not keep secrets from you. That's quite pointless, isn't it? Usually a gathering like this, it's meant to remind us that, at the very least, we should not rip the world to shreds and try to get along, but this time there was still a rift. When everyone departed, you could feel it. A gaping chasm. I don't like it. The way things ended. Redcoat man. <laughs> Rockford. Darling, his name was Rockford, but I prefer Red Goat Man. It's far more suited to the amount of respect he deserves. Which is very little indeed. And I have a feeling we'll be seeing more of him in the future. Unfortunately. I told you when you get to my age you start to be able to smell change on the wind. It's like the weather. You get very good at recognising the patterns. If only we could predict if this will be full-blown war or not. That would be useful. Yes, information would help immensely, but we don't have information. We know as much as anyone else about what my kind are thinking, and as for the humans, well, who knows? Who knows what's rattling around in their little heads? You did already make that suggestion last time, and frankly, I don't want to hear it again. Is it really so surprising that I don't want you to go back to that disgusting little village? to the people who hurt you so badly. I think it's a rather rational reaction, myself. 
you're <laughs> you're going to have to insist, are you? Why? Maybe you are the only one able to find out what they're thinking, what they're whispering. But if it's a choice between not knowing and sending you away, then I'd rather go into the future blind. I don't care how much stronger information will make us. I'm not the one who needs protecting. No. I am angry, yes, but not at you. I'm angry that, that things were going so well. For once in my very long life, everything was going so well. And now, it's not that it's all crumbling down, but I can start to see the mortar between the bricks beginning to crumble. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> that face. That determined little face. I've made quite the monster out of you. Haven't I? I won't cage you. I won't do that. Not to you, my little bird. Not when you've just learned how to spread your wings. But I want to. I want to lock you away where no one will ever be able to lay a finger on you. I never want to let you out of my sight. <sighs> two days. You have two days to learn what you can and then you will come back to me. And there will be no compromise on that. I will come and get you myself if I have to. And if you test me on that, then I will start thinking about cages. <laughs> what request, my darling? Why should I feed on you before you go? Hmm? And weaken you for no reason. Where's the sense in that? <sighs> You've become too cunning, haven't you? My intelligent little thing. I always called you my little bird, my sparrow, but now you're more like a raven. A clever crow. I do mean that as a compliment. They're fascinating creatures. Yes, I suppose if they see that I had fed on you, it would make things more believable. That you were running back to them, a wound on your neck, face pale, at least you've stopped bothering to ask if I'll bite you. That really would make me cross. I said I wasn't afraid of anything. And that's been true for so long now, but I'm afraid of losing you. I am so afraid that he won't come back. Whether that be because they hold you there or whether you choose not to return after all. You are fickle things, you humans. The crow analogy is quite apt, actually. Well, because you could very well see something new and bright and far more appealing and off you fly in a different direction. Dreary, am I? Hmm. Just because I can sense change coming doesn't mean I like it. 
change isn't always for the best. I have homes elsewhere, you know. Have I told you that? I've been shrewd over the years. Wise in my investments. Other cities, other countries. I can go wherever I choose. I've always liked it here because it's remote, private, quiet. But perhaps it's time to take the plunge and have a change of scenery. So when you return, because you will return, that isn't up for debate. Perhaps we'll fly away somewhere. Start fresh. You promise, do you? I've had a lot of promises broken in my lifetime, you know. Words are cheap and plentiful. Yes, I trust you. But please, my pet, don't make me regret trusting you. I don't think I could bear it.